Hello everyone, a very good afternoon to all of you. I am Priyanshi welcoming you all on behalf of Solar Quarter and First Free Group to our webinar on Solar Market Outlook Nepal. Thank you all the attendees for joining us today. I hope you all had a great time in networking with your peers in our exhibition tables. If you have not visited yet, no worries, the platform will be open even after the webinar ends. Before we start, I take the opportunity to thank and welcome our partner for this event, Sun Group. Now, I request my team to start playing with the sponsor video. Economies is advancing rapidly with its clean energy transformation to meet the aspirations of a billion people. SunGrow, a leading global supplier of renewable inverter solutions, took a decisive step in 2018 by establishing its manufacturing unit in India and reinforced its long-term commitment to the Indian solar market. The state-of-the-art factory, located near Bengaluru, is equipped with the latest infrastructure and testing facilities. It will soon work at an annual production capacity of 10 gigawatts with the latest infrastructure and testing facilities. The SunGrow Indian factory has a complete local team who perform their job meticulously and spend their time as a close family. I'm assembling uh, string and uh, central inverters with utmost ease and uh, my main responsibility is to provide uh, the right quality product to the customers. Over the last three years, SunGrow has created a benchmark in India with its world-class facility to meet the ever-growing market demand in and outside India. SunGrow's India factory is a shining example of creating value under Make in India initiative while forging ahead with its mission, clean power for all. Economies is advanced. Priyansi, you're mute. Thank you for interrupting and letting me know. So now, without any further ado, we will proceed with Namit Aneja, sir, from Key Accounts Leader, Northeast Asia and Nepal Sun Group, to start with his presentation. On the screen, sir. Yeah, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. So glad here to join today uh, in this webinar related to the solar mar uh, market outlook in Nepal. And uh, Sun Group is being... Uh, keen uh, you know spending time for nepal market and keen on working closely and providing our uh, pv solar inverter solution to the market and uh, so i will be just presenting a small uh, presentation uh, which will give you a brief idea about our uh, factory in india and our uh, goals that we are aim to achieve so uh, sangro as a brand uh, it's a global brand and uh, it's been uh, rated as most bankable uh, in motor brand for the last consecutive three years by Bloomberg reports. So that means that it's a globally accepted brand. And uh, in terms of uh, arranging the required uh, debates and everything, uh, it's uh, required to use a bankable brand, which is sustainable for 25 years. So that's uh, the motive of our brand. And we aim towards making clean power for all. This is are some of the extensive footprint across the globe. So as you can see that we are spread across each and every continent with the gigawatts of volume uh, supplied globally every year. We have already crossed more than 182 gigawatt plus inverters installation worldwide. These are some of the references. Uh, you can see some of the pictures in USA, India, Thailand, UK. So globally, we have supplied our solution. And this is uh, our world's largest inverter factory. If you talk about cumulative capacity of 90 gigawatt annual production capacity, including our factory in China and India, specifically talking about our India facility, its annual capacity is 10 gigawatt per year. Talking about our presence in India, 
now our uh, presence in india is actually helping us to focus more closely on uh, neighbor regions like nepal wherein we can use our uh, facility our uh, team here network here in india to cater the uh, regions like nepal which is geographically uh, quite close to the indian market so this is just our journey in 2021 we have already started our 10 gigawatt facility in india these are some of the numbers uh, in last 7 years which have grown uh, gradually in india supplied more than 11 gigawatt of shipments 40000 plus inverters supplied and inverters been running for the past 7 years successfully in indian market again as mentioned this is a glimpse of our factory in india some of our achievements uh, manufacturing setup from indian market already 11.5 gigawatt plus shipments have been uh, sold from indian factory it includes supply in india and also to the markets like us and also nepal so we have one of the biggest service network here uh, more than 10 plus warehouse spread across indian uh, states and more than 35 plus service uh, part uh, team members on sungro payroll directly and uh, apart from them uh, we also have our third party uh, tie ups just to cater uh, the locations uh, across the india and also the same service team helps us to expand our reach uh, to nepal as well so we have a product uh, varying across all the range uh, talking about utility cni residential monitoring solution starting from 5 kilowatt up till 5 megawatt we have the solution available with us this is one of the example of our 250 hx series inverters string inverter in utility segment this is one of the most selling uh, product globally in central inverter if we talk about our 3.125 megawatt solution and 5 megawatt solution has been a very successful product and we were the first company actually to launch this 3.125 megawatt rating globally again in cni system solution as mentioned we have uh, varied uh, rate, ratings with available with us residential starting from 5 kilowatt up to 20 kilowatt is available these are again some of the products which are available for markets manufactured in india and also supplied to us indian markets nepal bangladesh sri lanka from indian factory only some of the recognitions and apart from the regular manufacturing job we also are keen into our csr plantation drives we ensure that if we install any uh, big utility scale plants which are carrying our solar inverters from sungro we ensure to install the equal number of trees plantation to help our environment so that's it uh, from my end this was i think the brief probably would have helped to know more about uh, the sungro establishment globally and in india thank you thank you so much sir for the wonderful and knowledgeable presentation and setting up the tone for today's event so now it's time to begin with our much awaited panel discussion which is on solar market outlook nepal and to discuss this we have in the panel with us Mr. Nishant Goel from Renergo Developers. He is also the session chair for the day. Mr. Namit Aneja from Sangro. Mr. Ashish Garg from Sagar Mata Developers and Independent Power Producers Association Nepal. Mr. Sarbagya Ratna Tuladar from Sunbridge Solar Nepal. Mr. Roshan Silwal from Comptronics Private Limited. Mr. Sudeep Tuladar from Gham Power. Mr. Ashish Chalise from Simple Energy and Mr Guna Raj Dhakal from Recon the discussion will be led by Nishan sir handing it over to him thanks a lot priyanshi and uh, a very welcome to all the speakers and all the participants uh, it's my pleasure to session this chair, uh, session this webinar um, just a brief about myself i am nishan goel uh, director of renergo developers private limited uh, we've been a very active player in the nepal solar market for over the last 5 years Uh, we are involved in uh, multiple capacities in the Nepal market as a solar. We entered as a solar consultant, come EPC contractor, and in the last three years, uh, we have had uh, our footprint as a solar developer as well. Uh, just a couple of months back, uh, we signed a PPS for 20 megawatt uh, for uh, as a developer in partnership with a local uh, conglomerate, and uh, we are setting up a 20 megawatt project in Nepal. <clears throat> a couple of months back, we commissioned a 5 megawatt project in. Uh, Uh, near pokhara 
and a couple of other projects that we have in the pipeline wherein we're working in the in different capacities so uh we would be open to uh you know we would be open to for looking forward to any opportunities to collaborate with with the speakers or the participants we can take them offline so uh let's start uh i'll uh let's do it uh we'll the flow of the webinar would be that uh, we'll allow uh, all the speakers to introduce themselves and they can give their opening remarks. We can then come to the panel discussion and in then we can have a closing remarks from all the speakers. So we can start with uh, Mr. Ashish Chalise first. Uh, so if you can introduce yourself and you can give a couple of introductory remarks. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> hi, my name is Ashish Chalise. Um, I'm currently representing Simple Energy as a deputy CEO. Uh, Simple Energy is a joint venture company which was formed recently um, between a uh, partnership between Infraco Asia and uh, Saral Urja Nepal. Uh, Simple Energy would focus in developing rooftop solar projects in Nepal across um, CNI. Um, CNI. Uh, we will be focusing on RESCO model, so we'll be signing PPAs with clients and, you know, instead of selling solar systems, we'll be selling um, electricity generated from the solar system. So that is basically our model. Okay, great. Thanks for your introduction, Mr. Ashish. Uh, uh, next, we can have Mr. Sudeep Tuladhar to, uh, to present. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sudeep Tuladhar from Gambar, Nepal. I've been uh, associated with uh, Gambar, Nepal for the past more than six years and I'm working as a chief operating officer. Uh, as for Gambar, Nepal, uh, we have been operational for more than a decade now. And uh, till date, we have uh, installed over like four megawatt of projects and spanning over like 3,500 small projects. Uh, basically, uh, uh, we've uh, been working on commercial and industrial installations and uh, solar irrigation system. And even for solar irrigation system, we have uh, developed smart meters, which uh, help us collect operational data like uh, uses, discharge, fertility, which in, in turn is used to provide accurate advice to the farmers, which provides better yield. Yeah, okay. that is. Thank you, Mr. Sudeep. Uh, I request Ms. Ashish Gurk to present. Yeah, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is Ashish Garg. Uh, I am a, a power developer engaged in hydropower, solar, uh, have done a wind project study as well, and into power trading. So uh, quite deeply involved in the power sector. I'm also the vice president of the Independent Power Producer Association. So we are association of all private sector power producers in Nepal. And uh, yeah, so we look forward to interesting panel discussion lot to share lot of developments have happened in the power sector in nepal a lot of changes happening and the sector is evolving very fast so it's really important for all of us to keep abreast with the changes and adapt ourselves and survive and grow thereafter thank you so great to have mr gurg uh, uh, we recently got to know about the uh, the power trade agreement that has been signed with ntpc uh, with uh, a subsidiary of IPA. Uh, we'll get to know more about about that from Mr. Gurg once you know we start the panel discussion. Uh, next, uh, I invite Mr. Gunaraj uh, Dakal, if he can introduce himself. I think there's some. Okay, uh, I think by the time he connects, uh, Mr. Sarvagya Ratnakula. Uh, actually, sir, he is facing some connectivity issue, so he could not be able to join. You can proceed with other speakers. Okay, okay. Mr. Sarbagi, would you like to go now? Yeah, sure. So, I must say, everyone. So, my name is Sarbagi Ratan Tuladar. I'm the director of engineering at uh, Sunbridge Solar Nepal. So, we're basically an EPC company, and uh, we started off our journey in 2016. And um, we focus a lot on solar water pumping, and um, you know, besides besides undertaking. Uh, EPC works. We also collaborate with, um, you know, universities from all around the world. Um, so we uh, sort of like doing a lot of uh, work related to social enterprise, uh, prize, you know, tasks. And uh, yeah, so till date, I would say, you know, we've completed about, I think like close to about a megawatt of uh, projects. And yeah, I mean, like, you know, I'm really happy to sort of like be, be on the panel. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, thank Mr. Sabagia. 
Uh, next, we can have Mr. Roshan Silwal. Hi, Namaste, everyone. Uh, this is Roshan Silwal, Managing Director of Components Private Limited. Uh, we established in 2009, and uh, it's been uh, more than a decade that we are into renewable energy and uh, energy efficiency and energy management systems. So while, while doing so, you know, we are more engaged in CNI operation and um, installation with the rooftops uh, for, for all the all the uh, valuable clients uh, from, uh, in, in the CNI sector. Along with that, uh, we have also been doing uh, pumping and you know, other, other solutions uh, in the earlier time, but now we are more focused with, uh, with rooftop uh, installation for CNI in, in the larger scale. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Silwal. So, Danji, do we, uh, I mean, is Mr. Gunaraj available now or should we start the panel discussion then? So, you can proceed with the panel discussion. Still, uh, I think it's still not available. Let's let's proceed with the panel discussion now. Yes. Uh, so, we uh, appreciate a, a list of points to be discussed. I think with the first term, uh, which is shared, uh, the most important point, uh, point uh, which is the market trends, opportunities, style, point, and, and the regulatory. Date ahead for the Nepal solar market. Uh, it's I think that's a, that's a point. In most of this, too, uh, I will ask Mr. Uh, Sudeep Toladha to uh, you know present his views on uh, so to talk about the current tariffs that we see in the Nepal solar market. Uh, his view, so he sees that they'll evolve further. So I think you can speak on a couple of those points on how how. Hello. Just wanted to confirm, uh, is anybody able Speaking to hear uh, Nishant, sir? No. I'm not able to hear him. Yeah, not too well. I mean, I not, not, not from my side. Yes, he has some network issues. Uh, so. He is frozen. Then I can hear you. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, now we can hear you. Nishant, sir, I would just suggest you if you can keep your camera off and try once. So we can hear you properly. Actually, uh, Nishan sir has some network issue, I believe. Am I audible now? Yes, sir, you can. And we can hear you. Please continue. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, I, I think I, lo I lost a bit of connectivity in the between. So I was asking Mr. Sudeep Tuladhar to uh, present his views on the market trends uh, for solar in Nepal, uh, the opportunities that he sees in this space, and the regulatory updates that uh, if he would like to share. And he can also share his views on how the tariff uh, would evolve going further in the Nepal market, the tariff for utility scale projects. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, the market trend, uh, I will concentrate for Nepalese market, basically. Uh, in Nepal, where uh, the it basically solar, but it is dominated by dominated by system cells. So there's very uh, limited market for I mean, maybe very limited market for energy cells projects like PPA projects. So uh, the PPA market, which is not as mature as in India, which is just starting to grow up. Uh, we have uh, started working on this project for the past one and a half years now, and till it we have uh, installed over 500 kilowatt of such projects. There's a huge market for uh, this kind of project. Say uh, our study shows more than 700 megawatt of such uh, PPA projects can be done. However, basically here, uh, the main idea is like we, rather than selling the system, we sell the energy, we install the system, we sell the energy and uh, basically uh, uh, the energy cost will be, uh, basically they'll be paying lesser than they, they are paying to the grid right now. Okay. So this is the, trend in Nepal, which is growing up. Few players have started working on it and we being one of them. So this is something uh, uh, would open up in the coming future. Secondly, I would say uh, the battery market, both with and without solar. Uh, whenever a term battery arises, uh, the one thing that comes into our mind is like, it's for storage. So this makes sense uh, when a uh, few years back when we had load sharing, uh, there usually be power outage for more than 18 hours a day. So then it used to make financial sense, right, to install battery. But now uh, there are cases of power surpluses. Uh, so for, uh, I mean, it's still there are power outages for a few minutes, but still uh, keeping a battery for uh, a few minutes, it doesn't make financial sense. But what we have done, we have been doing some research work on uh, this battery for the past year. And we what we have found is that there are other applications of battery just rather than just, uh, 
back power backup, which proves that the solar the battery market will evolve in future as well. Other applications we have found out with batteries like it uh, we, we can reduce the demand charges. Uh, we can uh, it improves the with solar it improves the uh, solar yield as well. It improves the power factor. It can work uh, as good as like a uh, capacitor bank and uh, the tariff rate in Nepal is different. So in the daytime, it's uh, in the evening time, it's high, in the nighttime, it's low. So what we can do is we can charge the battery during nighttime and like uh, discharge it during the evening time when it's uh, higher. So with, with all these benefits added, uh, even, even in this present time, uh, opting a solar battery is beneficial. Fine, it makes financially feasible. So this is a trend like it's growing up and I believe like uh, in coming years when the price of battery would fall down, come down more, I believe that uh, the battery would, the battery market would open up rapidly. Okay. So these are the basically opportunities as well. So basically the battery market, the PPA market, moreover uh, on the PPA market, what I would say is um, more than 70 to 80% of the market belongs to the industries because they are the more consumer of low, right? But if we look at the PPA rate that, uh, I mean, if we, if we look at the uh, uh, cost that they're paying to the grid, that is at, around like 8.5 rupees. And uh, financially, if you look at it, uh, presently it doesn't, uh, uh, we, we cannot beat that rate at this point of time. So um, with the decreasing in cost of solar panels and inverters, which is supposed to be decreased right now because uh, as we see from January, the prices of solar panels have started to dip. So with the reduction in prices, I believe that this more and more PPM market will evolve because we this, all these industrial load, these will be, uh, this market will open up. So uh, this is another market which is acting as an opportunity for us. Okay. So those would be the opportunities. Yes, Nizam. Yeah, I'm audible, Mr. Kulada. Yes, yes, you are. Please yeah. go ahead. So, uh, okay. Uh, do you also see a possibility of NEA signing PPAs in which there is a mandated storage, uh, you know, for like twenty percent or more? And is there a tariff that you worked out, uh, like the current tariff that they allow without storage is seven point three rupees per unit, a fixed tariff of seven point three. But a model that exists in Nepal, wherein uh, a utility scale project with a certain percentage of storage. Uh, you know, inbuilt into this, it can be done in a PPA model with any. Uh, the model that we are working is for distributed systems, small systems where we like okay. install on the households and rooftops, right? Where the PPA rate is uh, yes. not regulated by the government. It is basically between the uh, two parties, like installing party and the, the client. Basically, what we need yes. to do is we just uh, uh, put a tariff that is more than the tariff they are paying to the utility. Okay. 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 Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll come back to you uh, with the, for the closing remarks. Uh, let me move to the next speaker. I think uh, it'll be great to hear about the regulatory updates uh, and the current challenges and opportunities uh, that as a developer in you know, uh, the uh, industry is facing from Mr. Ashish. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Nishanji. Uh, so to start with, you know, the outlook for solar is... Uh, uh, it is bad, extremely challenging. And as we move ahead, the journey is also with a lot of uh, obstacles, roadblocks. So uh, I would say it's alarm bells for us. Uh, now, if you look at the Nepal's overall uh, power scenario, we are energy surplus nation now in, in four months during the rainy season from June to October. Yeah. So, uh, so we are producing that's hydro is producing more than what the country needs. And in next two years, we'll be 24 7, 365 energy surplus. So, we spent 500 megawatt last year. Uh, we could not find the market in India, and the consumption in Nepal is not increasing. So, now this has led to redefining the overall dynamics of the uh, Nepalese power sector. So, we have to now integrate with the regional market. Since our production is increasing, the consumption in Nepal is low and is not expected to keep in tandem with the increase in production. So we have to integrate with the Indian market and Bangladesh and others thereafter. So now if you go to the Indian market, the solar tariffs are uh, are so low. We are talking of uh, two rupees, three rupees. 
and uh, this has i would say i will use the word poisoned the the policy makers and regulators in nepal uh, and uh, the so so the indian price is very low so how will nepal uh, solar survive uh, when the next door neighbor is uh, producing power at such a low tariff further even for hydro when we went to the indian market and uh, looked into uh, you know who can buy nepal's hydro solar has its solar and wind have their limitation of uh, grid instability and power only during certain time of the day hydro is 24 hours so so for nepal's uh, hydro there may be some demand there are tenders on round the clock uh, coming in india rtc tenders where we are getting a hydro tariff of more than 4 indian rupee uh, per kilowatt hour so solar uh solar in nepal is expensive and uh, may not find its way in the indian market so now uh, in the nepalis market what will solar uh, how will solar survive now the cost of our production is so high and uh, these are small projects our grid is small so i think our cost of production as the speaker earlier mentioned that even 8.5 uh, nepalis rupee uh, is not uh, uh, we cannot compete as solar rooftop or you know other solar service providers so cost wise it's a uh, it's a, it's a very dangerous situation for solar nepali solar cannot be exported to india and uh, in nepal also uh, hydro tremendous competition so uh, so so with the falling energy prices um, you know the ground mounted solar will have a very very tough journey gone are the days 7.3 nea will will not sign ppa 7.3 anymore we are hearing of 6.4 we have someone even talked about 5 around five so uh, so so you know i think the days ahead i don't know whether we have any days ahead for ground mounted and i think even on the even on the rooftop and other i uh, think the the tariff power tariff is expected to go down on the industry in nepal uh, because industrialization is a priority and uh, the tariffs are going down so so and it uh, power is available now the distribution infrastructure is also improving in nepal uh, like you must have heard the homshi cement uh, you know they have a 60 megawatt requirement 3 years they were without a transmission line and they just got connected so it's it's a priority now everyone is getting connected in that case why will they keep the solar installations and uh, uh, so 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 you know even for cni uh, as as the term says you know it will be extremely challenging so so i i am quite negative on that uh, so uh, so that's how i see the overall outlook and on the regulatory side uh, very very stringent and negative when we go to ministry of energy and talk to the joint secretary the secretary including the minister they tell us that why do we need solar the solar india is 2 rupees why do we need all this why are you coming to us this is a blank answer and uh, we don't have a reply to it we say no no nepal needs 10% for energy mix energy security we, we, we but no one uh, no ears are there to listen to it and the regulation if you see uh, we had discussed in the last webinar as in the webinar also there is a draconian provision on irrigation land so no solar can be done on land which is irrig which has irrigation so so mind you you know most of our tarai land is uh, is you know has irrigation infrastructure uh, whether you call modern sunsari ayojana or bagmati or sikta or there are all around so so that is and uh, the new electricity act let me put a alarm bells here to the people here uh, associated with this sector that the new electricity act which is uh, uh, which is being tabled in the upper house and it will find its way uh, in the lower house in a month of month from now says that no agriculture land can be used for solar so now currently we are saying irrigation land it is now moving to agriculture land so every land i don't know how will it define which is non agriculture and what is agriculture so so i think there'll be a ban on solar uh, on the land being used for solar we are trying to lobby from association from the industry that Please remove these clauses. So, so these type of clauses are being introduced. There is a clause on uh, not using the area of conservation area for uh, for uh, solar. You know, we have uh, we have the various conservation areas in Nepal, which are environmentally needs to be protected. There also solars are banned. Let's say, and the IE requires at least six months. So when you apply for a license, it takes almost one year to make a project. and uh, and then by the time uh, that the tide has turned the otherwise so nea is not signed any ppa of uh, solar for last more than one year even more and i don't think so they uh, they intend to do that the electricity regulatory commission is also uh, not clear it's not functioning well so the rules of the game are not being uh, established so overall 
uh, overall, I don't foresee any project happening. More than 10 megawatt is ruled out because of our grid and below 10 megawatt also because of the cost disadvantage, because of the negative outlook, because of the regional market being extremely competitive on the solar. So it's all, I don't know how to really get this sector together to, to, to get into uh, solar. In fact, hydro is also now people are due to lack of market, you know, even in hydro, we feel the threat. Uh, so, so that's how I will sum up the overall regulatory and the, the future outlook of solar. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank you, sir. I mean, uh, on one hand, like we see a lot of challenges, uh, but the couple of uh, big companies like Ryzen Energy, uh, the couple of other developers as well, who've signed MOUs uh, with the Investment Board of Nepal, and they've signed uh, MOUs for some very large capacity, like 100 megawatt. There's one MOU for 250 megawatt as well. So, do you see any any semblance in that, or I mean, is it just a, you can say a, you know a show off or or a kind of a just you know bombarding the market kind of strategy? I would rather say 600 megawatt, uh, the, the Sky Power Canada signed at the last investment summit in 2019 yeah. organized by investment board. Then we heard about 250 megawatt, we heard about 100 megawatt. So, so uh, if I may say crudely, this yeah. all is, uh, this all won't happen. Uh, yeah. uh, because our grid cannot, a small grid cannot uh, sustain these projects. And the overall policy framework, the structure in the country, uh, like the land ceiling act and there are so many things which will never allow these projects to come they will find uh, problems everywhere and yes if they want to export to the indian market then i'm sorry we we cannot compete the two rupees three rupees from the indian market on the nepali side so so i think uh, uh, very simple it won't happen would you also like to throw some light on the recent uh, agreement that you've had with ntpc yes very interesting so uh uh, we as private sector developers uh, in Nepal, we have opened a, a public company, Nepal Power Exchange Limited. Right, so uh, it's it's a power trading company, both domestic and cross border. So I'm the managing director of the company. So uh, we signed an agreement with Money Current Power Limited, India's largest uh, private power trader. Uh, so Money Current uh, will provide us inroads in the Indian market. And the current 2022 spill energy expected to be around 1000 megawatt during the rainy season in Nepal. So we have got buyers for 500 megawatt in India. So we are now seeking government approvals to ensure that we don't spill this time and the power reaches the, across the border. So we have high hopes and also we are working on how to get a power exchange in Nepal to get it competitive because the is being unbundled and now we are looking for open access even in Nepal. So, so we want to really get efficiency, uh, reduce the cost of intermediation and uh, the high overheads of NEA and uh, all those things, you know, we want to uh, get competition and reduce the price of power in Nepal. So 8.5, we expect, we sell at 5 rupees, Nepal rupees in hydro to, to NEA and the average tariff of NEA is 10 rupees. So there's a 100% loading on it due to transmission, distribution losses, CSR of government, profit of NEA, overheads of NEA blah 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 so many things so we want to make sure this five is added we say one, one rupee for your uh, for your wheeling charges or other margin then the, the industry gets at six rupees or maybe six and a half rupees so the, so that's that that's the our business model. okay okay thank you and thanks for correcting me it was with money current it was not with ntpc it's a private uh, power trade agreement that has been signed yeah. okay uh thanks a lot sir for your valuable inputs uh We'll come back to you for the closing remarks. And if there are any questions that are asked by the participants, then we'd like to answer, you know, we request you to answer them as well. Uh, one more thing, uh, uh, would you also, can you also uh, mention how, how much is the current installed capacity in Nepal solar market in the utility space? One last question to you, Mr. Gurd. Yeah, so the ground mounted, uh, I think it is around uh, 35 or 40. There are around six or seven projects, the large being uh, 110 megawatt, another one is eight, then five, four, uh, three, one yeah. also. So I think it's between 35 to 40 megawatt. Yeah. Uh, I think that that's our ground. Okay. 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 Thanks a lot. Uh, next, I'll request Mr. Sarbhagya Tuladha uh, to share his views on the tariff in solar market along with some policies, uh, uh, you know, that have been implemented or some policies which have never been implemented. So request Mr. Uh, Sarbhagya to speak on that topic. Yeah. Uh, thanks a lot, Nishan. So, um, I mean, basically, you know, Ashish and uh, Sudeep, basically, he, they have basically mentioned their points. So I think it kind of like makes a lot of sense 
on what they said. So uh, from my point of view, I guess, you know, one of the, one of the issues with Nepal is we don't really have uh, a solo mission as such, right? A national mission, unlike India, which, you know, um, you know, India, they have this, uh, uh, the Johal Nehru solo mission where, you know, you know, they were planning on having their target met, you know, by like 2022, I guess, like 20 gigawatts of, um, you know, solar uh, installations to be done by 2022. And I think they met their target by 2018 itself. And they've basically revised their target further to about like 100 gigawatts now. I think they're getting there. But uh, like I said, you know, unlike India, Nepal, they do not have a solar mission as such. So, so one of the things with that is, you know, um, the, you know, it basically the priorities of the government, it keeps changing. I guess it's more to do with, uh, you know, the government which is in power. So I think uh, one of the things with what we basically need to understand is, you know, we basically have to have a long sightedness for this uh, solar sector as well. Because, I mean, you know, the government is basically just focusing on, uh, you know, the, uh, the need of the hour, right? So, you know, we basically need to change that as well. And the other thing was, you know, having this solar sector, I mean, a solar grid fit in, uh, capped in at about like 15%, which I think it doesn't really make a lot of sense because, you know, I think uh, be, uh, before a lot of these hydro projects came into, you know, construction and it came into operation, I think a lot of uh, the government prioritized priority a lot on having these, you know, solar projects come into operation. But now with a lot of these, uh, you know, hydro projects coming into, uh, you know, operation, I think the government has basically sidelined a lot of these solar projects. And uh, I think I think it was like in 2018 when the government basically announced, like, you know, even even the domestic sector would be liable to, I mean, would be able to uh, basically sell their, uh, you know, power to the grid, in, uh, grid themselves, right? Uh, and I think they said the rate was going to be about like 7.3, rupees a unit but that never basically you know that basically never took place so uh, i mean in terms of opportunity i guess like you know i mean there are opportunities with having to basically be using the rooftop solar for generating electricity and because uh, uh, i mean there was a recent study done by a university in Kathmandu, which, which basically said you know if you basically uh they basically what they did was they uh you know measured all of the they conducted a study wherein they were measuring uh, the potential of uh, rooftop solars in a lot of cities in Nepal. So they basically did, you know, studies in Kathmandu, Bharatnagar, Pokhara, and where they found, like, you know, the per capita, uh, the average capita rooftop space was about like 24 meters square, which is more than enough to basically, you know, have uh, solar. So they said like there was enough to generate about like eight megawatt hour of uh, you know, uh, energy generation uh, per year, which is, you know, which is about like 30 times uh, the, uh, you know, the energy consumption at the moment for a uh, per capita in Nepal. So in terms of opportunity, I, I do see a lot of opportunities, but, um, you know, in saying all of that, I think the government basically has to be really clear on it, clear cut on its policies, because even, even with a net metering policy, I think, you know, nothing... I mean, there's no such thing as, uh, you know, uh, in black and white. So even with this simple concept of getting, you know, um, uh, a net metering, you know, uh, paperwork done, uh, the NEA basically who, you know, take care of all of that. Um, I think they, are, they themselves are not really, uh, I mean, they're not really confident or they're still confused on how the net metering policy would work. Right. So, I mean, what we did was, for example, we had this 500 kilowatt solar, which we installed in a medical, uh, you know, facility in uh, Palpa. And, you know, we basically had to convince our client saying, you know, your payback was going to be, you know, so and so. And so basically that project uh, from that project, what we basically saw was like the payback was going to be about like six to six, six and a half years. But uh, in saying that, you know, uh, when we basically approached the NEA, I think uh, they didn't really have a clear cut, a clear cut answer as to saying how the net metering policy would really work. 
And, uh, you know, so what we did was basically, you know, we basically had to tell the client that, you know, you yourselves have to, you know, go to the NEA to understand, uh, you know, how you're going to be saving on your energy, right? So, like I said, you know, I mean, there's no clear cut, you know, answer that you can get from the, uh, from the government. So the policies are a bit, you know, they're, they're not really there in black and white. So, um, yeah. So if I may ask you, like, if uh, suppose if there's a new customer who, who wants to get a net metering uh, agreement done, so how much time does it typically take or does it depend upon area to area? Yeah, so basically it depends on the area as well. So, for example, a lot of uh, net metering solutions has been done in Kathmandu. So, uh, I mean, if, if, if it's a client in Kathmandu, I think it takes you it takes you about a month at least to get it done. But, um, I mean, if you're outside of Kathmandu, probably, you know, it could take as long as like three months or so. And it's capped at one megawatt, right? Uh, or is it possible above one megawatt as well? Uh, uh, for the rooftop, it's about 500 kilowatts. Okay. Right. So, yeah. 500 uh, kilowatt for one connection. Like if a client has two connections of 500 kilowatt each, then can you have two separate net meeting agreements? Uh, I, th I think it's per client that you can get like a 500 kilowatt installation. So it's capped at about 500 kilowatts. Okay. 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 Thanks a lot. Uh, I think to elaborate upon that point, I'll request Mr. Ashish Chalise also to present his views. Uh, as you mentioned, Simple Energy is working in the decentralized space. So I would request uh, you know, him to share his thoughts on this topic. Sure. Um, first, uh, I'll talk about exactly what we're doing currently, um, then about the outlook, and then about policy and regulatory challenges, if that's OK. Yeah. Um, so currently, Simple Energy has signed about 8 megawatt worth of PPA with CNI clients. These are all cap captive PPAs will be selling to the clients directly. Um, so we have been able to raise funds to execute these projects. So, you know, talking about the outlook, we we think that the outlook is not as grim as Ashish G projected, especially on under the meter side. You know, back in 2016, when load shedding ended in Nepal, our main focus was always under the meter. You know, we always thought over the meter will be very challenging in Nepal because of its, you know, geography, because of its size, because of its, you know, um, infrastructure of the, you know, of the of the power sector, and regulation, regulatory, and um, policy challenges in Nepal. So we always thought above the meter would be extremely difficult. We never wanted to enter that segment, but. Opportunistically, we, we we entered the utility scale um, project, one of the projects where we were, you know, we were given the opportunity to invest and to be a technical partner. Otherwise, um, we always thought that over the over the meter market was very, very, very tough in Nepal. So that's how we build our business after end of load shedding, you know, when every company was scared, every company was shutting down, you know, biggest uh, solar supplies, biggest battery supplies was shutting down. We really accelerated our operations and marketing and fundraising programs of, you know, forecasting and seeing that under the meter market will really, really flourish in Nepal in next decade or so. And we still believe in that, though we, though we have faced a lot of challenges in the process, especially from, you know, a policy and a regulatory side. But we are still very hopeful, um, still very enthusiastic about it, right? Um, Going towards some of the challenges, um, like uh, the speaker before me, I think his name was Sudip Ji, right? Sorry if I got it wrong. Um, as 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 he mentioned, um, NEA, as the implementary body of um, you know net metering and other distributed solar um, policies, has been juggling the policy around you know ministry policy says something else but when it comes to implementation it's changed so the solar net metering capacity was capped at one megawatt initially you know we were also involved in in preparing that document and you know getting that document through the parliament so we were also involved in that process so that initial document had one megawatt of capacity capped for a rooftop solar net metering system and without any stakeholder consultation without anybody knowing it without publishing it anywhere even not on their website they reduced it to 500 kilowatt so 
the comp the company which installed a project um the speaker before me said he has i think 110 kilowatt uh, inverters times five so it's 550 ac side and you will never allow that system to be net metered until and unless they reduce the size to four four forty right so if they if they take out one inverter then only net metering would be allowed uh so those kind of policy changes you know they call it net metering but it's not net metering it's net pricing um ERC directive says net metering, ministry directive, the policy says net metering, but what NEA implements is different. NEA implements net pricing. So instead of net metering, what they do is they have different calculation for um, energy bought from NEA and energy sold from solar. So they, they give 7.3 rupees flat for every single unit that's produced from solar instead of net metering. Um, other challenges on the granular level, you know, NEA staff and uh, DCS, the, the distribution centers, they have no idea about solar. Um, we have implemented around 20, 25 net metering systems around Nepal, and we have had to, you know, decimate the knowledge. And, you know, even the contracts from the NEA, we had to take it ourselves to these places and um, just, 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 um, pass on the knowledge from us to them instead of you know any 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 doing that so you know the challenges are there but again the challenges will always be there you know it's nepal any business has challenges you know you you buy something from china and bring it here and sell it that also has challenges but you know we are we we are creating a path through these challenges we have been able to do so so far we have been able to raise funds we have uh, made it financially possible um, to even beat uh, NEA rates uh, at CNI level, you know. Um, my friend from Ghan Power said it's not beatable right now, but we have signed 8 megawatt of worth of PPA, uh, which beats NEA rate by almost 12 to 15 percent. Um, so that is that is our that is our uh, outlook, the initial outlook for next two, three years. And, and then we think storage will come huge, you know, as battery prices go down, uh, we want to integrate storage initially in each of the projects we do, each of the rooftop projects we have, and, and then just, just expand our storage program. Um, so I still feel, you know, uh, all, all the challenges, lack of vision, you know, lack of any solar mission or any targets um, that Nepal does not have, our leaders do not have that vision. Um, the private sector is doing its part, you know, above the meter would be very challenging, like Ashishti said, we always thought we could never sell electricity to India. I, I, I and Bishalda, who is um, our MD at Saroloja, we have always been, you know, not in favor of, you know, proponent. We have, we have not been a proponent of selling energy to India. We always thought it was a very, very competitive and tough market. Our electricity would always be very expensive. So our focus and our outlook is um, really good uh, towards the distributed segment, under the meter segment in Nepal. Okay. Uh, would you also like to share like what percentage of a consumer's uh, consumption are you able to replace with the solution that you're offering? Almost 90%. Almost 90%. But because, that... because when it comes to household, they're playing, they're actually paying a higher price. They're paying almost 12, 13 rupees. And though, you know, ERC or NEA has promised uh, rate reductions, the recent rate tariffs, actually, they increase some of the rates. Yeah. They They showed as if they reduced it. Yeah. But they, you know, based it, you know, very smartly. But some of the industrial rates actually has gone up instead of going down. So we do not believe that, you know, the rates will go down because more importantly than the rates, reliability, reliable electricity is most important for industries. Yeah. Um, if the electricity is reliable, but it, the rate does not go down, I think industries will be happy to just take that electricity. So I, I don't believe in rates, in the domestic market rates going down so much. Okay. So it's mainly the uh, household uh, market that you're catering to, or is it, is it mainly the industrial market that, that is your focus? See, we do both, you know, from simple energy, we target um, CNI market up to systems of around 500 kilowatt each. And from Soral Urja, the other company that we have, uh, we try to cater the household market. In systems of 10, 15, 20, 25 kilowatts. So we do both. Okay. And the last question to you is uh, like, uh, you know, with the recent, uh, you know, uh, up and down that we see in the prices of uh, yeah. major equipments like inverter and uh, uh, the module, uh, 
uh, even the metal prices have been going up uh, there have been delays in the supply chain how do you cope up with such challenges and i think after you i'll ask namit also to respond to these questions yeah i mean you you really touched a soft corner right now because i'm going through a 2.5 megawatt procurement process and it's it's been it's been very difficult for us the prices have like panel prices is like 3 4 cents above what we had expected and you know the timeline for supply chain is also long because the chinese new year is also approaching and the supply chain has been disrupted due to covid in china so um though challenging i think um what we will try to do is we'll try to phase our procurement and um instead of going all out for 8 megawatts right now that's what we have done we're going to break it up into four pieces and hope that you know the supply chain constraint uh, eases eases out and the uh, prices will go down okay. that's how we're coping with it okay okay thanks a lot it was really wonderful interacting with you thank uh, you next i'll ask uh, namit uh, you know if you can uh, suggest uh, you've heard about the nepal market about the ubiquity scale as well as the decentralized uh, market that we have in nepal so if you can speak a bit about you know what kind of innovators that the market can uh, adopting and uh, how to consider how to you know although the inverter prices have not been that volatile but the other components the other major components have been the prices have been very volatile so how do we uh, keep the lcu in do while still uh, you know fulfilling the targets that we give to our clients yeah so once again thank you nishan and uh, good afternoon everyone again so uh, as mentioned correctly that uh, inverter although in terms of bus if we see it's hardly 4 to 5% of the uh, you know bos in terms of the costing however it is considered as a heart of the solar system and rightly so because uh, it's really important to use a right product and right quality product to start with we know that presently we are in the times where the tariff pressure is uh, quite high on all the developers epc players and uh, now you know the pressure is uh, coming down the line to their vendors respectively however it's imperative that the quality should not be compromised on and in terms of you know optimizing the cost rather than compromising on the quality raw material or brands being used it's other way around i believe like as you mentioned lcoa is actually the important factor which consists of not only the capex costs but also the opex cost and also the generation numbers so combination of three really matters and uh, therefore it is imperative that you know any equipment weight inverter or any xyz equipment in the solar system you use should be of the uh, global standards when i talk about global standards uh, presently you know there are uh, several brands being there in the uh, solar industry specifically if i talk about regions like uh, asia pacific like or india or uh, nepal where actually these are very price sensitive markets so in terms of getting better prices sometimes you know developers are compromising on the brand value or the product which is actually incorrect and uh, if you will see there are very few uh, talking particularly about inverters there are very few makes which have presence globally when i say globally not only in china or india but also if we talk about the us market or europe market middle east regions because the quality standards there are actually the approvals are quite rigid and uh, uh, therefore not every inverter make is approved there for example if i talk about australia there is a special approval that is required amo which only very few inverter brands are actually approved so that should be one of the criteria while going uh, shortlisting any inverter make or any equipment rather because any solar project that is being installed is for a lifetime of 25 years so in order to get the service for 25 years the sustainability of the uh, brand should be there the global acceptance should be there also how it is focusing on that particular sector if i talk about uh, particularly sunro we are a solely renewable sector focused company we only deal in products like solar inverters battery energy storage system robotics it's all renewable so uh, this is our bread and butter and therefore r&d is our backbone so r&d has to be strong to cater these difficulties you know which can help be helpful to optimizing the overall bos cost also i'll just give you one example like in india actually we were the first one to launch 3.125 megawatt central inverter rating and the sole purpose was actually to make sure uh, in terms of bos costing 12.5 megawatt block size as per our 
uh, study, it was quite optimized in terms of the financial uh, and the generation loss. That was an optimized block size at that point. Therefore, we came up with this 3.125, which later on followed by several uh, players. And now, if you talk about in large utility scale project, 12.5 megawatt is the most popular block size being used by all the developers and EPC players. Similarly, in Sting Inverters, we came up with 200 kilowatt model. And that is, again, one of the best selling model uh, globally. And uh, now the rating, you cannot just increase the rating and, you know, uh, uh, expect a reduction in BOS. It has to be an optimized rating and optimized, uh, which should go parallel with the module ratings, current ratings in hand. So presently now high uh, current modules are available in the market, more than 540 watt peak. In future, we might uh, come to a 600 watt peak also. So to cater that, now uh, the right uh, capacity rating of inverter uh, has to be there. If I talk about our brand, we are already launching a 295 kilowatt inverter at 50 degree, which is uh, launched considering all these factors. How much impact it will have on the BOS is the most important thing, along with the generation numbers, what uh, we consider while launching any new rating. So that has to be there uh, while uh, launching any new product or considering uh, the particular segment, uh, targeting any particular market. If we talk about the manufacturing processes, then it has to meet the renowned industry practices and should uh, be highly efficient, made of quality materials and also as per the global standards, not only the regional standards, but the global standards has to be taken in mind. That is actually missing uh, when we see that uh, many players are actually missing this thing. So these are few of the points. And uh, then after all this, the most important thing I feel what comes is uh, you can sell n megawatt gigawatt level of product but if you are not providing the right service then it's all basically uh, not worth it because as i said 25 years has to be considered and you should have a setup to cater for that 25 years product availability should be there for the lifetime of a project for replacement repairing so uh, considering that our setup in india is more than 11 gigawatt uh, supply uh, installations already and therefore we have uh, established a quite a comprehensive service network pan india which will also be utilized for regions like nepal and now coming on to the second phase of entering the nepal market we have also now uh, associated with one of our uh, partners for rooftop category uh, Compronics India Private Limited, Roshanji is in the panel, wherein we will take their help uh, to cater to the market more closely with their local presence, specifically for the CNI rooftop segment. Because in the rooftop segments, uh, small, small requirements and immediate uh, requirements are there. So as to decrease, minimize the lead time availability of local service team with the help of our partner, we can cater to those regions more efficiently and time. So this is uh, from our perspective, yeah, Nishanji. Okay. Uh, one question that we repeatedly get, get asked as an EPC player is, uh, like when we buy an inverter, we get a standard warranty of five years. Right. Uh, should we, uh, sh should a developer go with an extended warranty in the beginning itself or, you know, and if, if yes, then how long uh, of an extended warranty should he, should he go for? And in the costing that we do, in the financial modeling that we do before we plan a project, uh, should we consider replacement cost in the life of 25 years for it for the inverter or not? Yeah, so I'll specifically talk about, talk about the string inverters because considering the project sizes in Nepal more or less is less than 10 megawatt. Yeah. So the string inverters makes more sense here considering that uh, the project sizes. So basically, uh, if I talk about in terms of the extended warranty, then we standard warranty five years is there, which every make is following. And it's extendable up till 25 years. So our opinion is that uh, until the end of fifth year, there is always an option to opt for extended warranty. So it should we opt at that time? Because it's not required to pay for that duration, you know, five years ahead of time. Yeah. I think there's some connectivity, connectivity issue at his end. I think he's left the stage. Okay, we'll come back to him. Uh, Mr. Roshan Silvan, if you can present your views. Uh, and you can uh, you can also speak about your collaboration with Sungrow and uh, the strategy that you're going to follow in Nepal 
in helping sungrow expand their reach hi hello uh, thank thank you nishant uh, for the stage uh, basically you know we are, we always have been uh, working with uh, renewable energy and uh, you know we we have actually been doing lots of uh, grid tie system and rooftop systems and while while going going through the through the systems and then while you know using lots of uh, product from different uh, uh, you know uh, providers and then we 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 have we faced lots of problems you know but few few uh, products work work well for a couple of years and then you know again again the problems started coming up where while trying to troubleshoot and all the service was the issue and then you know again again taking the uh, carrying it was uh, as a headache so so you know while uh, trying to find uh, find a good product you know we, we got uh, to come across uh, namiti and then we started uh, having having a you know partnership collaboration and then finally we got uh, got um, you know got to take this uh, brand uh, for nepal market so now uh, now with respect to the uh, market scenario and all sun group sun group what sun group is offering is is a best uh, design solutions uh, that that is that suits space for the for the nepal market so when it when it comes to uh, the different range of uh, ranging from 5 to 5 to you know 110 kilowatts uh, in in the rooftop model uh, they are among the best um, uh, pro products which which have which which are really compactable and easy to use and then and then you know installation is really really uh, good and then with with that uh, the quality of the product has uh, been exceptionally good so yeah and then and in terms of the uh, market you know uh, we actually have been uh, looking into the uh, nepal market and then you know trying to trying to grow in nepal market for a long time now due to the covid uh, you know that the market is uh, not going up to the mark we have we have signed uh, you know in between 3 to 4 mega megawatts of uh, contract but due to due to the time and uh, you know again again with the covid scenario where client are actually not being ready to invest on on our or you know they have uh, they have uh, paused the you know uh, installation for now so there there are various reasons you know why we're not being able to uh, you know install and uh, to green signal from the from the industries as well so so while doing it uh, and the best thing that we could do is take the take the best system uh, in in hand and then you know invest it for one so that it runs for 25 years you know that that is our motive you know when when it comes to the quality sun sun grow you know, we feel sun grow is uh, best and and uh, and within the budget okay so i'll also I'll like to ask you know. about your views on the challenges shared by mr ashish gar or you know by the other speakers that uh, with hydro uh, having excess you know surplus supply in the system and uh, with very very less focus that has been there from the regulatory bodies on increasing the demand uh, in the country like for a country like nepal the demand of 2000 megawatt is is pretty small i mean there should be more measures taken to increase to work on the demand side of uh, electricity rather than on the production side of electricity so how do you see your business expanding uh, with the you know with the talks of the tariffs going down i mean the retail tariffs for consumers or in the, for industry going down how do you see your business expanding or you know how do you uh, see yourself first of all what i'd like to say is you know we need to take uh, solar pv uh, energy as as a uh, as a uh, you know uh, solution where where you'll get uh, you know uh, proper voltage system proper energy management for proper energy management and energy uh, uses you know generally what happens is you know with with the with the not adequate uh, infrastructures uh, at, at place many industries are not uh, getting uh, clear you know adequate energy you know the voltage drop is the drop is there and then and then the, they are they are you know forced to use high, high end stabilizers but to their quality of energy is really low so in order to compensate that that you know this should be the first thing to do in order to compensate that all the industries are or the other commercial you know they should go for the solar as an alternative as as uh, not not as a 100% uh, substitute but as as a you know, solution as a part of uh, a, a system where it, they can go up to 20 30 to you know, 40% which can actually compensate the system where they are running on low they can use the uh, solar pv systems and then you know as as their demand uh, goes on increasing by time you know they can use the uh, energy from any which will help them stabilize and then get clean energy uh, not just the clean energy but uh, but the stabilized energy that is one one thing i i see you know uh, as as a perspective and um, you know all all the uh, companies like us uh, you know uh, can see into that and then you know and then tap this opportunity uh, in the market other than that uh, as as us is uh, god uh, said i know uh, yes uh, from government perspective yes you know when when you talk about the above the meter like uh, us is um, you know what he also said charlie says he also said that uh, you know the government policy when it comes to hydro 
they always want hydro to, to come in front because they see hydro as a prospective of the country or the, or the growth of the country or, or the other way of or means of making money for, for the future you know they, they see india as a prominent buyer and then you know they, they see sometimes you know recently bangladesh have come and signed in a good a good uh, size of agreement and all these are the things that that is actually you know liberating them uh, towards you know uh, thinking that hydro is, hydro is only the solution that they have but uh, but uh, you know or, or in the other context what they are not thinking is why hydro you know uh, of course yes it is also a green energy and then nepal you know uh, being being the hydro power country yes 99% of the energy is uh, green but uh, as of now you know when we are uh, buying buying 400 plus megawatt from india which is which is from the coal based plant so now we are, now our clean energy the thing is uh, around around 60% so first thing is this can be compensated this 400 megawatt can be compensated for, for uh, first so that you know we we can 100% clean energy that is one thing the other the other thing that we can uh, you know uh, or, or you know government should see is the the, the cap that they have uh, put with solar uh, system that is 10% or up to 10% of the hydro hydro uh, you know installed hydro capacity so if, with with that uh, the government is not actually you know with with the solar producers or the other or, or the renewable energy with solar pv system or the wind energy because uh, with with this what happens is you know as as of now as you uh, said there are 200 megawatts up up and you know and then with, with that uh, we, we are just up to 200 megawatts of uh, solar that that uh, we can do that is already tight you know uh, yeah. as as of now 100 uh, 110 to 20 megawatts of has been signed and then now another 200 or 600 plus are in line uh, for 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 the license survey license so we, with that you know this uh, uh, this is all packed and there is no no way where new developers can come and you know uh, g- you know get some creative ways of, of doing solar say like agri pv you know or or, or, the, or, the, or the other other ways of you know doing it in, in a very creative way tomorrow say for example you know uh, uh, mining yeah, you know coin mining will be the you know coin mining bitcoin like, like like and then this currency mining will be the future so you know uh, sooner sooner or later the nepal government will also opt for it and then they, they will pass a policy on it so when it happens you know what we can do as an energy company we can we can find a place where we can we can mine it we can use the same same energy in order to mine the mine the currency cryptocurrency and then you know, on lots of it so there are ample of opportunities uh, for us so you know it is it is not a setback for us just the thing is that you know we as 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 a producer we as as a people in the sector or uh, the stakeholders should actually push government and then ask them one question you know uh, does as as a, as a, as, a, as a nation of the country or as as a business people or, or the you know, community of the country do we have the equal right to do the business or not if not give us an opportunity give us a place where we can do business in a rightly manner where we can have equal rights over business that is what i would say okay thanks a lot thanks for a little input mr silva uh, namit if you back again uh, you can answer the question that i was asking you uh, in the financial model uh, what is the replacement cost should one consider a replacement cost for the inverter uh, for utility scale projects i'm asking yeah uh, sorry for the interruption yeah so uh, as i was mentioning that uh, standard inverter warranty of 5 years everyone is offering as on date and uh, it is extendable extendable up to 25th year that is lifetime of a project because all the inverter design is for the 25 years and in terms of string inverters uh, especially there is actually no replacement required for that duration of 25 years unless there is a fault or any other kind of scenario otherwise the inverter requires no replacement so in the financial modeling uh, as a inverter manufacturer our recommendation always is that you can consider for the lifetime you know uh, the extended warranty pricing can be considered just to put in the financial model keeping the worst case scenario you know and calculating those numbers otherwise the extended warranty if required uh, any case to buy it should be preferably at the end of fifth year of standard warranty because there is no point buying that five years before time because you have always have an option to buy it at the fifth year of the uh, standard warranty term so this is our recommendation okay, okay thanks a lot uh, yeah. uh has mr gunara joined us i mean uh Janshi is is he on board now no sir actually uh, he couldn't join okay. yes sir he is facing some connectivity issue so you can proceed with the other speakers okay uh, 
Okay, I think uh, we largely done now uh, with most of the points that we had to cover. Uh, uh, I'll share some of my views as well on on the same topic, and uh, then I think we can move to the question and answer section. So, uh, I largely again we've been working in the utility space uh, primarily in Nepal. Uh, we've got some exposure in the rooftop space as well, but our our main forte has been uh, the ground mounted uh, uh, utility scale only, and uh, I think um, most of the points that Ashish ji covered, uh, they are valid, and uh, they uh, unfortunately today we don't have. Unlike other panel discussions that we've had in the past, we don't have anybody uh, from ERC today or from NEA or from DOED, which are the regulatory bodies uh, uh, that regulate policies in 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 the Nepal solar market. Uh, any which ways we interact with them uh, on a very regular uh, basis. Uh, so we have also been highlighting the same issues. Uh, uh, I think the issue start with the first step itself. The first step, which is to take a survey license in Nepal, has become very challenging. And uh, as uh, Mr. Ashish pointed out, there is a new requirement which has come, I think, not even one year back, which is you cannot do a solar. You need to take a NOC from the irrigation department to set up a solar power project. I mean, to take a survey license to set up a solar power project in Nepal. Uh, now, uh, Nepal. We can call it a you know land of rivers. There are so many rivers and there are so many uh, irrigation canals that have been built. So most of the viable lands that you get, they fall under the irrigation uh, department. And I heard uh, recently, I heard a number. I think there are around 30 plus projects which are stuck in DOED. DOED is the Department of Electricity Development, which are stuck at the uh, DOED uh, because they've not been able they've not been able to get the NOC uh, from the irrigation department. And there is another policy that Mr. Ashish mentioned, which might bring in agricultural land also under the same purview, and what might be required to take a, you know, I don't know where would Nepal. It's a blessing for Nepal that most of the land here is fertile. Most of the land comes under agriculture. Uh, so one that being a, you know a, a country uh, with uh, such a beautiful range of Himalayas, uh, it's very difficult to find uh, land in the Tare region which doesn't fall under the irrigation department or which is uh, in future, which doesn't fall under the agriculture department as well. So that's one. Second, uh, the uh, most of the policies, they've just been blindly copied, uh, you know, from what was applicable for hydro. So for every project, uh, even if uh, like if I've done one project in uh, Delhi, uh, I'm just giving example because I'm in Delhi. And if I need to do another project in uh, Noida, this, again, the same with the same topography, with the same uh, you know soil profile, with the same everything being the same. I again need to do an environmental approval. So there is no learning. Uh, you know, if there is a study which has been done in a particular area. Ideally, projects in say five kilometers or say like fifty kilometers radius of that region, they should not be required to do uh, the same IWE or the same environmental study again. But again, uh, one one major drawback which which is you know easily in the hands of the regulators is that they can at least have a relook at the policies that they've made. And on one hand, uh, developers are struggling with the with the component pricing, with the you know, uh, logistics and uh, with the tariff, but at least the approvals which need to be taken, at least they can be simplified. So as a forum, I think we are working together and we, uh, you know, there's a lot of work that IPAN also does. And uh, with some serious developers, we are constantly you know putting these uh, issues forward to the developers but uh, not to you know but of not much avail uh, so far uh, on the rooftop front i think yeah uh, uh, even i don't see the tariffs falling soon very soon uh, any advertises that any i mean most of the people uh, at least the most of the hydro developers perceive that the tariffs might come down but i believe that that it, i don't see it happening very soon and there is a good market in the risco model uh, as Mr. Chalice mentioned, they've already signed PPAs with 8 megawatt. Even we have a pipeline of around 5 megawatt, uh, wherein uh, people are ready. But one more challenge that we face in Nepal, uh, you know, working in the rescue model, especially as a company from outside, as a company from India, is that uh, not many consumers, they've got a credit rating. And it's difficult to raise uh, debt from uh, outside uh, Nepal. Uh, if we have to raise debt from Nepal, then uh, then again, they need a lot of bank guarantees. They need a lot of due diligence, and that also takes a lot of time. And then we've also faced challenges in getting the net net metering agreement signed. Uh, uh, again, as the capacities have been uh, also been reducing. And then the last point, uh, you know, is that uh, 
one question which i think none of us have an answer to uh, or maybe we do not have a firm answer to is that in a country wherein uh, i mean the geographical the biggest geographical niche, uh, neighbor is india the prices have been very low why you know should we have solar at 7.3 rupees or more or you know so that is one reason that we are constantly being you know <laughs> being getting asked and which we do not have an answer to so we also explain them the we explain them all the challenges we help them calculate the cost of electricity generation per unit or per megawatt uh, but again so far as i said as as mr ashish said uh, it has it has been very challenging so there have been very few ppas that have happened in the last 3 years uh, i think our ppa draft ppa was signed one and a half years back and still it was stuck so after a lot of struggle uh, you know after a lot of uh you can say uh you know a lot of lot of challenges we got it signed but yeah it's it's difficult uh, it's getting increasingly more you know difficult going forward so the outlook is good provided that there is some intervention that happens from the regulators uh one that they stop comparing it with hydro uh, they work upon the demand management so that they can manage the surplus energy that that's going to be produced they strike uh, good uh, agreements with the neighbors uh, in you know for power trade uh, i think a beginning has already been made by uh, you know with 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 uh, this private trade of 500 megawatt happening there are there are opportunities to trade power with bangladesh with myanmar with other neighboring countries as well i think uh, na should be focusing more on managing uh, you know the demand and how to uh, take care of the energy that is going to be fed into the system so i think that that's it from from my side rather than just penalizing the solar inverters and making life you know more difficult for the solar developers thank, uh, thank you sir for uh, giving your insights on the topic as well it yeah. was uh, really in, uh, insightful uh, we have two uh, questions uh, so i'll be displaying it on the screen and any speaker who wish to answer can do that okay so i'll uh, read out the question what are the factors making indian solar price cheaper than in nepal uh, so i think i already covered it uh, uh, mr magar would you like to add a couple of points or otherwise i can <laughs> i have i think i can also take it up or any other speaker who like to take it up nishan sir yeah. you can also say and also ashish sir can add on that we would like like that okay uh, mr gurg you like you like to go first or should i speak first yeah yeah so love to do that uh, so see uh, in nepal uh, when we develop a solar project the cost is uh, coming to around 6 crore to upwards per megawatt uh, and uh, these all projects are below 10 megawatt so the land acquisition cost is also high the land is uh, like say per bigha for 1 megawatt we need 1 bigha so it's like at least 50 lakh rupees per bigha uh and uh, you know the the cost of doing business in nepal as you all know is high the freight cost is high the logistic is high the 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 workers uh, uh tariff is high and uh, all the other you know uh, to to manage the system the transmission line which we have to connect that is also a big um, a big issue the service way inside any substation also takes lot of money so below 10 megawatt uh, projects will be very very expensive now on the indian side which i think nishant you would be more Uh, equipped to answer is you know what we have seen is these projects are very big size 500 megawatt 1000 megawatt 1500 megawatt so economies of scale are there and the land is uh, available in abundance uh, and you know the transmission evacuation is also pretty simple as it uh, as we read and see so nepal is uh, very very expensive one is due to scale one is due to the cost of doing business in nepal everything is imported it's expensive to get it here so nepal will be uh, will be much much uh, expensive than what uh, the solar price in india are yeah so yeah i think i think you you largely covered uh, most of the points i think the main factor is uh, which uh, you know we find uh, you know uh, very difficult to explain to the regulators at least but i think which is well understood with all the other stakeholders is the economies of scale so economy of scale is the biggest factor uh, that we you know i mean uh, for ground mounted projects uh, for any tender that happens uh, whether at a state level or or at the central level in india it is 50 megawatt or above at central level it is 100 megawatt and above so obviously uh, when we negotiate uh, for modules for inverter for any equipment uh, that is used in the project uh, obviously the economy of scale uh, work very differently second thing is uh, we have in india most of the tariffs that we see uh, as 2 rupees or 2 and 1/2 rupees 
uh, these are backed by uh, foreign funds. Uh, these are backed by you know uh, some very large equity uh, funds which have uh, access to capital at one percent, two percent level, and uh, those kind of uh, you know players are not ready to come to Nepal market because the size is not there. The minimum ticket size for them is hundred megawatt. So uh, the in Nepal, the entire market itself, as defined by NEA, which is like ten percent of the installed capacity, is limited at two hundred megawatt. So uh, those uh, you know bigger players uh, who have sometimes single digit IRR expectation, they are not ready to come to Nepal. Third thing, as as much as Ashish said, yeah, we have abundance of land. Uh, so there is ample land that we have. India is one of the largest countries in the world. So the land availability is not an issue. There are many solar parks that have come in India. So that is also one more reason. Uh, that is one thing that we have been proposing to NEA, but they have not, <laughs> not listened to that. Why don't we develop a solar park in Nepal? If you're really serious about doing something constructive, then let's build a solar park in Nepal. We've got ample land available in the Tarai region. Uh, there's a lot of interest for solar from the Tarai region in Nepal. I mean, from the eastern region, which is Dalkebar and that area where we already have a 10 megawatt commission project. But there are no initiatives being taken on that, that front. And last is, you know, the substation capacities, they themselves are very limited. So as I was asking, like there are some companies which have announced projects of 100 megawatt and above, they are baseless. I mean, they don't have any uh, plan where they would be connecting it to, how the evacuation would happen. So that is also one more thing that Nepal, uh, you know, uh, lacks compared to India. So I think these are the uh, probable main, you can say, there are other factors as well, but these are the main factors. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have one more question and then we are done with it. Yeah, okay, I'll leave that out again. Now, uh, what can be the reason why net meeting is not getting realized in Nepal? Why any is skeptical about approval of net meeting? I think I'll, I'll ask Mr. and uh, Mr. Sarbagya to uh, respond to these questions. They, I think, are more equipped to uh, take this up. Yeah, um, thanks, Nisha. So, I think in terms of uh, net metering, uh, I think initially when, you know, about in 2018, like I mentioned earlier as well, uh, the government had basically announced, uh, they basically laid out this white paper saying even the households would be able to sell electricity to, to the grid at about 7.3 rupees a unit. But uh, that didn't really happen. So, I mean, even now, I, I, guess, I guess with net metering is, uh, you know, the government, I, I think it's more to do with uh, the NEA basically losing out on the income from the clients right so i think you know i mean if you have for example i mean if it's in a it's if it's in like a small town where you have a really large client who is basically you know one of the largest clients for the nea in that region alone i mean if he basically opts for you know switching to solar using net metering i mean the nea basically you know they're gonna be losing out on their you know source of income so i think you know that's one of the reasons that you know the nea is basically just making it altogether really difficult for clients to uh you know opt for net metering um i think besides that mm, yes yeah, so i mean obviously the uh, the nea wouldn't basically be paying to the client you know the amount of money that is uh, at the end of the month right so yeah i think yeah i think i think that's one, one of the i think that's the major reason uh, would you like to add any point to this, Mr. Chalisi? Or Mr. Sudeep? Any of you? Uh, see, I think the reluctancy is not... NEA, I don't think, has reached that point where they have realized that, you know, that system will chew into their profit. They're not there yet. I think the reluctancy is because um, it's not a priority. You know, it's not a priority for, for them. Um, and that's all and and the bureaucracy the bureaucracy is so weak um the processes the operations is so weak that you know, they cannot execute which is not what they've been doing for years i don't think they already you know they are already thinking of net metering system as as a big challenge and gonna chew up a big chunk of their revenue you know, we're not 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 there yet i think we're about i don't know two three four megawatt net meter system so far which is basically nothing so that's my point of view. Okay. Uh, any comment from you, Mr. Sudeep, on that? Uh, I basically agree with Ashish here. Uh, I would say uh, 
lane metering is not a priority for NEA. Basically, they are more hydro dependent, hydro centered. So that is something they are reluctant to do with. Yeah. Okay. Also, I would like to add a, a bit on that as well. You know, if, if, if you comment. Please, please, please. Yeah. Actually, basically, you know, what I've uh, seen in NEA's part is that NEA as as a you know. Uh, decentralized body, you know, uh, throughout the country they have their uh, DCS and then they are operating through it. So when it comes to net metering, you know, as um, uh, Sarabhaji earlier said that, you know, Kathmandu being the uh, place where lots of, um, you know, rooftop solar has been installed and then, you know, DCS of uh, Kathmandu are more more aware of, you know, the process on, on documentation and then, you know, what process and you know, how it should go. But when it comes to, com comes to the cities outside Kathmandu where, you know, uh, in any pro rooftop project that happening for the first time, if you go to the to the department and say that we are here for the rooftop, uh, you know, grid uh, grid eye connections, you know, so first they will say is we are not aware of it first, and then secondly they will say we'll need to you know discuss with our with with the center and all. So once the document is submitted, then later on now there there is a new policy that has been passed, where we have to go through RETS, that's renewable energy testing center. Once, once your rooftop installation is done, you have to first go get the approval from uh, area REDs, where there's, they will come to your uh, site, in the installation site. They will inspect the system. They will, they will check the system for three, four days. Uh, and then, you know, and then they will, they will check the, each parameters of, of the systems, uh, yeah, whether, whether they are properly I mean, generating or not. Often that, and with, with, the, with the quality of our, 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 our after inspection of all the uh, documentations and the systems, they do give you a certificate saying that you can go to any now. So after that, only the, the you know the NES process starts. So so these are these are one 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 thing you know they might have started in order to I mean uh, uh, you know um, have have uh, rates on board as they are the testing utilities on utility departments for renewable energy testing, or also you know to make uh, NES uh, task easier, or, or let let's let's say you know any any doesn't care about this uh, you know where where. Uh, they, they have lots of hassle, as I, I said. They don't used to due to you know various DCS uh, not not knowing about the policies or or the document. They haven't received the documentation yet. So 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 these are the basic challenges of you know uh, why why you know any is not willing to do in, in a basic uh, level. That that is also uh, one part. Okay. okay. Apart from policies. Yeah. Thanks to all the speakers for their uh, responses. I think we've got one more question. Uh, how important do you think is the energy mix in the context of Nepal? It's a very pertinent question, and that you know hits directly on the head on uh, you know, the point of having 10% uh, energy mix that that is defined by Nepal. Uh, has Mr. Gurg left? Yeah, I think he's. Yes, yeah. he's okay. not here. Okay. okay. Uh, is there anyone who would like to take that up? Otherwise, I'll I'll, I'll answer that. Okay, I'll go ahead then. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is important. I mean, uh, one from I'll answer it from two perspectives. One uh, from a regulatory perspective, it's already uh, inbuilt. Uh, so, Nepal Electric Authority, uh, or you can say the uh, Ministry of uh, Energy, they have kept a provision for uh, a ten percent energy mix, uh, in which uh, of the total installed capacity in Nepal, uh, ten percent has to come from alternate energy. So alternate energy uh, counts uh, for solar, for uh, for wind, for biomass, but a lot of companies, uh, even including us, we've done we've done uh, feasibility for wind, for solar, uh, but the scope is not that much. Uh, it's primarily solar when we talk about the alternate energy. So from a regulatory perspective, it's already there. Uh, to what extent is uh, you know is being it's being followed? Uh, uh, I think somebody mentioned that uh, around 100 PPs for 120 megawatt have been signed. Uh, there is a window for another 70 to 80 megawatt in the current uh, uh, policy that we have. Uh, very soon, uh, you know, we might see some more PPs happening. Uh, the rate is being negotiated. Uh, we might not be able to see 7.3 anymore, or it might be the last round of 7.3 that might happen, and then the rate might be reduced. So. Uh, from my perspective, I say, uh, I mean, not from a regulatory perspective, that yeah, there should be an energy mix. Uh, hydro has its own challenges. It has its own environmental and social challenges. There have been a lot of uh, 
Halabu, you know, with a lot of NGOs, uh, creating uh, a lot of you know awareness and a lot of agitation uh, against um, against some big projects which have happened. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of big projects have also not been performing very well. Uh, they have been performing at much lower levels compared to the uh, generation that they were expecting. So uh, solar with the quality of power, you know, with having no environmental uh, impact, uh, negative environmental impact, having no environment, uh, no social, imp uh, negative social impact. In fact, most of the impact, if you see for in a solar project, whether it's ground mounted or rooftop, they are all positive. Uh, we have, you know, we, we are experiencing like rooftop solar, we are experiencing uh, roof uh, solar placed on uh, canals, uh, you know, which avoids evaporation. So most of the, uh, impact that you see for, from solar is positive so obviously uh, you know uh, and again uh, if you see the cuf also it's it's around 20 20, 20 around 20 percent for a solar project in terms of actual generation in terms of actual number of units it is comparatively very less per megawatt of you know hydro so uh, it's always good to have uh, you know a mix in which we have contribution coming not just from one source but from uh, from multiple sources so and again, ten percent is not much. There are countries, uh, you know, which have gone uh, much, much ahead. So uh, that also, you know, should be taken into account. All the neighbors, Nepal neighbors, you can see their energy mix has more provision for solar than what we have in Nepal. I think we've got one more question now. Uh, what do you think? How can Nepal, Nepalese bureaucrat and policy makers understand the importance of solar energy? Uh, the series of regressive move, uh, five to ten percent of installed capacity, not in the agricultural land. Okay, so yeah, I think that's a million dollar question that even we want to understand. Uh, if we, I had an answer to this, I would have, you know, <laughs> made the bureaucrats and the policy makers understand uh, yesterday itself. But yeah, that's a challenge that we're facing on a daily basis. Uh, I think uh, one answer that I can uh, give to this is uh, the political scenario in Nepal has also been very topsy turvy. Uh, there have been a change of prime ministers i mean uh, like three or four uh, i mean a couple of prime ministers and there there has been a change of uh, energy ministers also you know like there have been three or four energy ministers that have come in uh, come to the power in the last one year so uh, what we need is you know uh, again every decision is derived uh, you know it's driven from the top so if we have a, a forward looking energy minister uh, who stays you know at his position for a considerable amount of time I think he would come up with a roadmap uh, for making solar, uh, you know, for making good policies for solar, not just in the utility as well as in the you know rooftop space as well. That is one, and I think uh, uh, they I, again. I don't have a very specific answer to this. That is my biggest challenge as as a solar developer as well. That's all. That's all. Uh, I would uh, like to ask all the speakers, uh, do, does anyone has any point to mention about the same? Yeah, I think I think on all other speakers, I think we can just make one quick uh, closing remark. Yes. And I think we've already, uh, we're already at the time. So one one line each, a couple of lines each. I think if we have, if all the speakers, we can start with Mr. Charlie Say and then followed by Mr. Sudeep. <laughs> Actually, I just wrote it down. I, I didn't think we'd get a chance to do that. So, you know, my bottom line has always been that, you know, the transition from a dirty energy system to a clean energy system is inevitable. So is the transition from a centralized to a more distributed energy, customer centric energy system. Right. So the disruption is here and it's just, you know, about matter of time, you know, policies, whatever the hurdles are, uh, we'll overcome and, you know, uh, distributed is the future. Thank you. We. Yeah, uh, actually, there is no doubt that there is a huge market for solar in Nepal and in a hydro dominated country like ours, uh, with the issues of hydro like uh, there is flood, sedimentation, erratic rain, a proper energy mix is a must. So that so as to have a reliable and predictable uh, energy supply. So we are looking at around like 10 to 15 percent of the energy mix between hydro and solar. And in order to achieve this, we all like all the stakeholders from private sectors to government to especially all the regulators who need to closely work and work on this to achieve this in the next. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Sarbagya next. Thanks. 
Mr. Sabaki, would you like to have any closing remarks? I believe we are going to reach him. Okay, Mr. Silva, you can go next. Uh, first of all, uh, at last, you know, thank you, uh, so, uh, sponsor uh, Sandro and and uh, so quarter for giving us an opportunity to be a uh, speaker, you know, part of a speaker team today. And then, uh, you know, as a closing, uh, what I'd like to say is, yes, uh, this is a very hard time for 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 all of us uh, due to COVID, and, and you know, uh, uh, we don't know how the how the future is holding back, and then you know, uh, and then how how the solar market or the energy market will uh, go up and. But um, but with the with the you know aggression and then with the with the kind of uh, work we are doing now you know but let's let's keep on working hard and uh, you know uh, make the make the policy policy level of people uh, you know knowledgeable so that you know our uh, solar sector can grow and then have a have a good uh, percentage of energy mix uh, say say you know like earlier it used to be 20 percent over the hydro's uh, generation capacity so if, if actually that can actually be achieved then we'll have a lots of opportunity to you know, uh, gather our uh, system to the to the you know uh, the country. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Namit, do you have any closing remarks? Yeah. So uh, I think it's great to have this kind of interaction because presently due to COVID, probably you know physical interaction is not possible. So such interaction is always good to keep ourselves up, uh, upgraded and also so to say motivated as well. Because um, in the panel also, I can see there are mis mixed opinions about the policies and about the future of uh, solar energy in Nepal. But still, I think it's better to be optimistic and uh, let's wait and watch. Things will gradually improve uh, as per our belief. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sarbake, if you're there, no, I think he's there. Yeah. Uh... I think again now from my side, uh, thanks a lot uh, to first two solar quarter uh, I mean, uh, for giving an opportunity uh, you know, to all of us to come on a common platform again. Uh, I think we I've been a part of uh, you know this series over the last three years I think now, and uh, thanks to Priyanshi for organizing it so nicely, and thanks to all the speakers for you know sharing uh, for taking out time uh, from their busy schedules uh, and you know uh, sharing their views on such a platform. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, yeah, there are challenges, and I think there are challenges in life as well. But like we move on with life as well, so it's business. Uh, there are some good things, there are some challenges as well. But I feel uh, going for there are there there is uh, you know I think once the political environment as well as the this uh, you know pandemic situation improves, we would see some uh, positive developments uh, on the policy level as well. Uh, we don't see the tariffs falling very soon, so uh, I think the rooftop uh, market is definitely going to stay. And with now battery, uh, you know, the backup storage uh, getting more competitive day by day, there is a good enough market, uh, you know, once that comes into picture as well. Uh, and let's see, uh, we, we uh, you know, we are working very closely with the policy makers. Hopefully, uh, we can convince them to come up with some good policies for solar in the coming future. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks to everyone. Thank you very much to all our esteemed panelists for this wonderful session and a very special thanks to Nishan sir for superbly managing the session. During the panel discussion, you have asked insightful and pertinent questions that kept the conversation going and captured the attendance, uh, attention of the audience. It's not an easy task, but you made it look effortless. So thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you to the audience as well for extending the time and support for this event. The floor is open for networking now. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Mesh. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.